Hi everyone, it's Abby with The Bead Place and beadplace.net and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make a fun stack of faux leather bangles. These bangles have hard wire on the inside so they set the size that you need precisely. That way you don't have to mess with the sliding knots but you can get that cool knotted leather look. Remember, all the materials we're using today can be found at www.beadplace.net. There will be a link in the description below. Please remember to give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps our channel out and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Let's get started. The materials we're using today are jewelry tube. Jewelry tube is a two millimeter hollow rubber tube. It is matte, so it looks really similar to leather. It knots really well also. We also have 18 gauge brass half hard temperament wire. This brass wire is going to be completely covered by the tubing, but we use brass just because it's a lot harder than the other types of jewelry wires out there. So it's okay if you're using silver findings for this project or copper, the brass will be covered, but we just wanna use brass so that we can get a hard durable bangle. Now we're also gonna be using a variety of charms and beads. The beads need to have a hole that will fit on the two millimeter tubing. So if you have charms that have the bail that goes this way, you wanna make sure that their bail is big enough to go directly onto the tubing. Otherwise, you'll just need to use a couple of jump rings to attach them. We're also gonna be using jump rings to attach the charms that have the little bails or the holes that go this way. So I have a variety of charms and beads here. Um, I also have some semi-precious stone and pearl beads that have large holes specifically to fit on the two millimeter cord. In order to attach the charms, I'm going to be using five millimeter, 16 gauge jump rings. Now we'll go over the tools. The tools we're using today are a flush cutter. The flush cutter needs to be heavy duty enough to cut through the 18 gauge brass wire. We're also gonna be using two chain nose pliers. Now these pliers are mostly going to be used for opening and closing those jump rings to attach our charms. However, we might need to use them in order to shape the bangle wire once we get it through the jewelry tube. This next tool is a nylon jaw pliers. This tool isn't entirely necessary. I guess it's optional, however, I highly recommend it. We need a little bit of a softer hand whenever we're working with the ends of the wire once it's through the tubing. We don't want the wire to kind of split through the tubing as we work with it. So the nylon jaw pliers are what I like to use to kind of hold it a little bit softer. Now we're gonna be using scissors to cut our tubing. You can use a wire cutter, but the scissors just give you a little bit of a sharper cut. And we're also gonna be using a tape measure to get an exact fit. Let's get started. Our first step is to measure your bangle size. So if you're not sure what size bangle you wear, you can take a tape measure and measure the widest part of your hand. So if you're able to squish your hand kind of into a circular shape like this, that's best. So kind of mold your hand so like you're gonna put it through a bangle. So take a tape measure and measure around the widest part of your hand. So for me, oh, let's say about seven and a half. Um, if you're having a hard time measuring around the widest part of your hand or if you're not really able to kind of squish your hand down and that kind of gives you an inaccurate reading, what you can do, this is a tip that we share often in the classes that we offer, you can take a cup, a plastic cup, and you can cut the top off of the cup. You can put your hand into the cup and make a line with a marker right on uh, the part where your knuckles here are, so wherever your hand hits the cup without really changing the shape of the cup, then what you can do right at that line is take your tape measure and measure right there and that'll give you a more accurate reading for your bangle size. So what we're gonna do is take that size, so mine was seven and a half, we're gonna take that size and we're gonna cut our five pieces of 18 gauge brass wire at that exact length. So we'll be cutting five lengths of the 18 gauge brass wire that are exactly the length that we just measured for our bangle. So we're gonna be using a flush cutter to cut this wire. You wanna make sure that the flat side of the cutter blades are what you're cutting on your wire because when we cut it, that's gonna leave a flat side to our wire and then a pointy side to the other wire. 
so the wire that we are leaving on the coil gets that pointy sharp side and the wire that's on our bangle wire is nice and flush. So double check to make sure that the other side of the wire that it started with has a smooth flush cut as well. So now we're gonna add 10 inches to our original measurement. So for me, that's 17 and a half inches. So we're going to cut five pieces of our jewelry tube at that length. So I'm going to measure out 17 and a half inches. Now it doesn't have to be really exact here. We just wanna make sure that we have at least 10 more inches than our bangle size. So we've got our 17 and a half and our seven and a half. So we're gonna take those two pieces that we just cut and we are going to insert the 18 gauge brass wire into the tubing. So we're going to push it in as far as we can get it to go just using our fingers. Now one tip that I can share with you is you wanna make sure that the tubing is kind of following that natural curve of the wire. So let it kind of make a circle and then it's gonna be a lot easier for you to push the tubing into it. Now, what we're wanting to do is center this wire in the tubing so that we have five inches of extra empty tubing on each end. So it's really hard for me to work this into the center without pushing something into it. So you can use another piece of wire or your leftover coil of wire and you're just gonna use that to help you push it right into the tubing. Now again, it's important to make sure that you don't have any rough cuts or kinks on these wires. They need to have this natural curve in it, and that's what's gonna make it a lot easier for you to push this wire in. So I might have gone too far here. <laughs> Let me check and see. Oh, yep, I did, I did go a little far. So if that happens, you can just go in from the other side and do the same thing. So press it in so that your ends of empty tubing are about even. So you can measure it with your tape measure if you'd like. You should have five inches of empty tubing on each side. And once they are about even, which mine are, we're ready to move on to the step where we add our beads. So now we're gonna string all of the beads onto the tubing. We're also gonna be stringing any charms that have a bail that allow us to string directly on. We'll be adding the other charms later. I'm also going to show you a fun technique to create your own spacers like this. So I'm going to actually be building a spacer out of jump rings that looks just like this one. So I'm using three jump rings and I'm going to be hooking two of them together to start with. So I've got my two chain nose pliers here. I'm going to grab one of my pliers sideways on the jump ring like this. The break of the jump ring is at 12 o'clock and I'm gonna bring the other pliers in straight up and down like this. Now, anytime you're opening and closing a jump ring, you'll wanna make sure that you're opening and closing the ring like this and never like this. When you open and close it like this, you're sure to get it back in its original position rather than kind of struggling to get it pushed back into a round shape and closed all the way. So let's get back to the jump ring. We are going to open the jump ring by twisting our pliers like this. We're gonna hook another jump ring into it and we are going to close it. A lot of times what I like to do when I'm opening and closing the jump ring is I'll kind of check and look at it from all angles, make any adjustments that I need to in order to make sure it's shut all the way. Then I'm gonna go in and close that other jump ring. So right now I have two jump rings that are hooked together. I'm going to take that third jump ring, open it, and then I'm gonna hook it through both of these jump rings while they're overlapped. So it needs to go through both of those jump rings. So right through that center hole there while they're overlapped. So it should look like there's two jump rings that are hooked together hanging from the third jump ring, like so. 
So we'll go in and close that third jump ring now. And now we've created what is commonly referred to as a rosette. So it's a chain mail technique that makes a beautiful little rose shaped spacer. Let me kind of flip it over so that you can see it better. And so not only is this a great link to use in earrings or chainmail projects, but we can also then string it directly onto our beaded projects. And it creates a beautiful twisted link spacer. So I'm gonna string that right onto the end of my project. Actually, I'm gonna go one back. So I'm going to end with my smaller bead. But it creates a lot of fun movement. This is also something that you can add onto your project after you've closed it off. So if you feel like you need to add a little bit to it, you can do that. So it's not cool how it creates just a really neat, almost twisted rope look right at the end of my beaded section. So now what I'm gonna do is shape my bangle. This brass wire is really hard, so it takes a little bit of manipulation to just kind of bend it into a circle shape. Now, what holds the bangle in the round shape is not going to be this shaping that we're doing here. It's actually gonna be the knot that will tie at the top, but we just wanna kind of guide it into a circle shape to begin with. Now, I'm kind of overlapping the wire at the top. I'm kind of pushing it farther than what it needs to go, and that's going to stop the wire from really springing back open. Now, notice how I'm really concentrating on the sides and the bottom of the wire, and I'm kind of steering clear from the top. That's because if we push this wire at the top too hard, what could happen if we're too aggressive is that end of the wire that's right here, right here, that end of the wire could poke through this rubber tubing. So this is tough rubber, however, that end of the wire could poke right through it if we push too hard. So remember how I said we were gonna bring in our nylon coated pliers to work with the ends? That's what we're gonna do right now. So what I like to do is just grab the end here. You can see how I've bent this over so you can get a closer look at where the end of the wire is. I'm gonna grab so that it's right at the end of the wire. And I'm gonna just kind of press it down and I'm pressing it really light so that I don't poke through the tubing. So again, I'm just really kind of pressing down light. And instead of making like a circle shape with the end of my wire, what I'm actually doing is I'm making a circle and then the ends are just kind of gonna go straight together. And that's actually gonna end up uh, we're gonna end up with a circle once we tie it together. So I've got a circle that looks like it's about my bangle size. Now what I'm gonna do is tie a square knot. So a square knot is right over left and left over right. But a lot of people get confused when they tie a square knot because they think this is gonna stay my right cord the whole time. So I'm gonna kind of bring you in for a closer look on how we tie that square knot so that we're able to tie a knot that holds. So this right here is the cord that's in my right hand. I'm gonna bring that one over the left cord and then under. And I'm gonna pull this tight so that the ends of my wire come together. Then this cord that was once my right is now my left. So that's what's gonna go over the other cord at this time. So that's what gets us a completed square knot. Now at this step, it's really important to make sure that we don't have any extra tubing in here, any loose tubing. We wanna tie the ends of the wire right up next to each other. So while I was explaining the knot, I did let a little bit of this slip. So what I'm gonna do in order to make sure it's the right size and to make sure that those ends don't poke out when I wear it is I'm just gonna tighten my knot a little bit. And then check it and we want the ends of the wire to kind of almost butt up inside the knot. And then once we have a tightened knot, it should look like this. All right, so next what we're gonna do is take these tail ends and we are going to tie them on either side of the beaded section using a barrel knot. Now a barrel knot can be kind of tricky for people who haven't tied fancy knots before. So if a barrel knot seems a little bit too intimidating for you, you can just tie one of these overhand knots where you make a loop around and then bring the tail end through and just kind of tie one of those half square knot, half hitch knots onto 
the other cord. You can pull it tight, but I'm gonna show you a fancier knot here. Now, my friend Kelly, Kelly from Kelly's Beads Boutique, she has a great channel here on YouTube. She shows a lot of really great in-depth tutorials for knotting, especially leather projects. So she does a ton of barrel knots. I'm gonna show you how I do it, but I'd like you guys to check out some of Kelly's videos because she has great tips for how to use a special tube. So just a, a metal tube for beading. Um, and she shows really a simple way to do it. So I prefer just using my hands, but you can definitely check out Kelly's tutorial if you're having any trouble. So what I like to do is line my cord up exactly against the cord that I'm going to tie the knot around. So I've got it kind of mimicking the cord underneath. Now, what you're gonna do is you're going to start spiraling the knotting cord around the other cord, the bangle cord, but in the opposite direction that the cord is coming from. So here's where my cord is coming from at my knot. I'm gonna start spiraling back towards my knot. So I'm just going to start to wrap it around and I'm keeping it loose enough that I'm able to tuck my end back through these loops. So I'm just wrapping it around a couple of times. Whoops, I'm gonna redo that here. I'm gonna wrap it around a couple of times. And you always wanna wrap one more time than what you want your barrel knot to look like. So I'm going to wrap three times. You see how I've spiraled that around and my tail end is here? Then I'm gonna take my tail end through those spirals. So you see how it's through those spirals here? I'm gonna pull the tail end tight and I'm gonna place that knot tight where I want my knot to go. So I'm making sure that this cord is kind of matching the, um, the bangle wire and I'm just gonna tighten my knot and see how it makes a cool wrapped knot look and one of those loops kind of got sucked up into the knot. So you see I have two spirals now instead of three. So always make one more than what you are wanting your knot to look like. So I'm gonna repeat that on the other side here. And we're just going to slide the beads down so that it makes it a little bit more uniform and even. So again, I'm going to spiral opposite the direction that my cord is going in. So one, two, and three. And then I'm going to, ah! <laughs> I'm trying to hold my hands in a way that they can be filmed so you guys can see it. But it's not always easy uh, when it's held in a way that you guys can see it better than I can. So I'm going to go around three times and then bring the tail end through those spirals. All right, so I'm gonna pull that tight. And again, one of those little spirals gets almost tucked inside. And I'm gonna make sure to slide my knot to where it needs to be so that I'm happy with the way it looks. And sometimes what I like to do is give my tail ends a little bit of a twist. So it almost looks like my cord is spiraling around the bangle. I think that looks really nice. So you can do that if you want. And then you can trim your tail ends. So you can use scissors to do that if you have sharp scissors or if you've got a nice flush, flush cutter. You can do that. But I like to leave my tail ends about four or five millimeters long. Now, I've been wearing my bangles for a couple of months now, and I haven't glued any of these knots, and they've held up just fine. But if you want to put a drop of glue on your square knots just to be extra secure, I think you can do that. Now, you can see on these bangles here that I've added a wide variety of charms. So some of them have mostly beads, some of them have just charms. So what I'm gonna do to this bangle that I've just made is add some beautiful charms 
kind of all along the outside of it. If you've got a lot of beautiful spirals here with your cord and don't want to cover them up, that's fine. You can add your charms mostly in the front, but I'm going to really dress mine up with some charms. All right, so next we're going to be adding some beautiful charms onto our bangle. You can add as few or as many as you'd like. I'm going to really dress this one up because I'm only making one on camera today, but normally I like to wear them in sets of five. So you're gonna open your jump ring just like we showed you before, and then you can either add your charms to the front, kind of between our faux sliding knots here. They actually do slide, but they you don't have to slide them to adjust the size because it's a, a bangle, so no worries about that. Um, you can add them to the front beaded section here, or you can add them to the bangle across the back. So I think I'm going to do a combination of both. I like to hook over both of my cords here, um, but you can just choose to do one if you'd like. So just go in and close it. If you go over both, there's a little bit less movement. So if that's your preference, go for it. If you want to have more movement and you want those charms really sliding around, you can do that as well. So I like to have a mixture of sizes. Actually this one, I'll just show you, I'm gonna put just on my bangle wire. So like I said, I, have, I like to have a mixture of sizes and textures. So you can see I've got some kind of open charms with negative space. I have crystals. I've got a charm with a lot of design on it, um, but no cutouts. So I just really like to mix it up. I think that's what creates a lot of fun interest. And I think all of these charms, yeah, all of the charms that we're using today are Tierra Cash charms. So you can find all of these charms in our website at www.beadplace.net. I'm gonna link some of my favorites down below for you, but we've got a whole Tierra Cash section where you can check out charms and where you can check out all of the tear cast products. And then these jump rings that I'm using are my very favorite jump rings to use for everything, especially adding charms on because they're very durable and they seem to be just the right size for pretty much every project. So these are our five millimeter ID. So ID is inner diameter. That's the inside measurement of the jump ring. So these are five millimeter ID 16 gauge jump rings. So I'm just gonna close that on. And we've got one more charm to add. I think I'm gonna add it to the very back. All right, get in there, bud. Okay, so I'm just gonna close that in and check everything over to make sure it's how I like it. Make sure we've got enough movement everywhere where I want there to be movement and make sure everything's in the right direction. I always have to check my ohms to make sure they're in the right direction. They should look like they're um, like a 30 rather than the other way around. And yeah, I think I'm happy with it. So we'll give you some pretty product shots. Thank you so much everyone for watching this video. Please remember to give it a big thumbs up. It really helps our channel out. If you have any questions or if you'd just like to say hi, you can drop a comment down below. I'll do my best to respond to all of the comments. If you'd like to see more content like this, you can subscribe to our channel. We put out new project tutorials all the time. If you'd like to support our channel even further, you can check out the Patreon down below. We have a private Facebook group. We do quarterly giveaways for kits for our projects. If you wanna check out more of our kits, you can definitely check out the link at beadplace.net down below. There's a ton of kits um, and we have video tutorials to go with all of them. Please remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and thank you so much for watching.